Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers, my sisters, I hope everyone's doing good. And I pray that everyone is enjoying their holidays because uh, most of the world is actually on holiday. You know, December is the end of the year, the Gregorian year that everyone or the bulk of the globe actually uses Muslim and non-Muslim. The school terms are connected as well to December in a lot of cases, their holidays. People work during this time of, uh, meaning according to the calendar, and they are off usually towards the end of December. And at the same time, we have the Christmas that happens on the 25th of December, the Boxing Day on the 26th, and the New Year on the 1st of January. So uh, I am going to share with you something that many people have asked me. You know, we have so many people who have... Uh, family members who are not Muslim and in some cases you have a single person who is a Muslim in an entire family and sometimes they very close knit with their siblings their parents obviously they should be so they begin to ask questions the do's and the don'ts you know it's the end of the year it's the only time we're gonna get to meet our family but it happens to be Christmas it happens to be for example the new year it happens to be anything else that the people may believe in and it happens to be a holiday as well. And so what should we do? Because out of a thousand emails or maybe even more, I want to share with you one that actually stood out a lot for me. A sister tells me from one of the advanced countries, she says, you know, we grew up siblings very close, my parents and my sisters, my brothers, we were very, very close to each other. And we actually uh, loved each other so much and we still love each other. And as time progressed, we went to different parts of the country. Some left the country and went out of the country. And uh, as time passed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to guide me to Islam and I became a Muslimah. And uh, now what has happened is, I work and I, I work very hard through the year. I don't get any leave that is meaningful enough for me to go back to the town where my parents are. And uh, the same applies to my siblings. They work hard. The main holidays that they get at the end of the year. So what happens is we gather uh, at the house of my parents where we grew up and my parents really love all of us. They don't have a problem with me being Muslim. They don't have a problem with the faith that we've chosen. They cater for halal food for me. They actually, uh, you know, do not serve alcohol when I'm around and so on. But uh, primarily all of us happen as brothers and sisters to get together only at the end of the year with our parents. Now, am I allowed as a Muslim to participate in that, knowing that the following day is Christmas or it is Christmas Day or, for example, uh, it's in that festive season or it's the New Year Eve or it is the New Year. Now, uh, this sister was saying that some of the scholars said it's not allowed. You shouldn't be going. And I thought to myself, you know, they are responding based on their environment and their own situation. And they are not being sensitive to the reality. They're not being realistic. And at the same time, they don't understand. They haven't looked into what has just happened? And this is the case with hundreds, if not thousands, or maybe even millions of people who have relatives who are not Muslim. And sometimes they're your own parents and you love them and they love you and they don't have a problem with you. And they're really, you know, kind and they, they, they reach out to you. And the only time you're going to get is actually at the time of Christmas. So if you are going there, there is no harm whatsoever. It's not a problem. Your intention is clear. You're going there to spend time with the rest of your family who happens to be non-Muslim. You're going to uh, dress appropriately. You're not going to eat that which is forbidden. <clears throat> In fact, they, according to this one question, uh, they cater for halal. They make sure everyone eats only that which is halal. And they actually do not serve that alcohol there. So it's something where they catering for you. They, they allow you your space. And uh, those are your siblings. It could be your family. Uh, it is in this case. So would you be allowed to go? The answer is yes, you would. Your intention needs to be clear. You don't compromise uh, what you firmly believe and you don't want them to compromise what they believe. Because obviously the same way you have a right, they have a right. And so 
uh, we don't trample on each other's toes, but you will be there. You will participate in the joyous moment of the get together that's happening because it's convenient at this time and the intentions are of utmost importance. Now, a lot of people don't understand this. And this is why I say sometimes we ask scholars who've never been interacting with non-Muslims or people who have family members who are not Muslims. They've never interacted with such uh, families and they don't understand they they answer you based on their environment they answer you based on a muslim environment sometimes they answer you without realizing that this does happen and they answer you thinking or for some strange reason that you're not supposed to even be interacting yet subhanallah there are rulings that would allow you to marry a person of the book under certain circumstances and that is referring to the jews and the christians so it goes to show that relationships are definitely permissible but obviously without compromising uh, what you believe and the same way they wouldn't compromise what they believe i wouldn't like to shove down the throat of another uh, something that they would not consume and I would love that they respected the same right of mine so mashallah in a lot of these cases you find they have fulfilled our rights in a better way than Muslims would in a lot of these cases they fulfill our rights in a better way than Muslims would and then we say don't mix with them don't talk to them don't go there I mean come on that's my mother that's my father if the same happens when they pass away. Are you allowed to go? Are you allowed to? You should go. You should go and express your condolences and sympathies and you should even help if need be. You might even have to pay for the burial if need be because if you're a child, then obviously the burden may sometimes be upon you if it is. But sometimes we get people who just say, no, it's based on their environment. It's based on what they're used to. They probably not. Uh, they haven't ever mixed, they haven't interacted, they haven't lived in those circumstances. So they're just saying no, based on themselves. So I thought I'd clarify this. Um, uh, like I said, not just one email, but thousands of emails asking us if, you know, we could visit our homes during the Christmas period. Why not? You can. And, you know, you know that I'm going there. Uh, without compromising my faith, I'm going to be with my family. It's a joyous moment of getting together as siblings. And guess what? It's a moment for them to see the beautiful teachings of your faith. You're so kind. You're so calm. You, you know, you, you don't compromise your religion. But at the same time, uh, you don't shove on them to compromise theirs. And what you would do is uh, be kind and reach out with them. Your character, your conduct, the time of salah is not compromised. Uh, and your other duties unto the Almighty are not compromised. So this type of response, you probably won't get it from a lot of the scholars out there who have not lived in uh, countries that perhaps are predominantly non-Muslim or they have a, a huge non-Muslim population. Because like I said earlier, they, they wouldn't really sometimes even know what it's like. Uh, May Allah make it easy for all my brothers and sisters out there who have family members who are not Muslim to be able to respect them, to be able to, uh, you know, share that beautiful reunion more than anything else. You know, the hadith says, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مَنَوَى That all actions are judged by their underlying intentions and for every person is what they intended you know so the intention here is the reunion it's the get together uh, the family members get so happy and delighted like this one sister was saying you know i've been going every year and it's been so good and everyone's so happy with me and i'm happy with them these are my siblings i grew up with them brings back fond memories and we really bond very well uh, they're not your enemies they're not at all your enemies it doesn't mean you became a muslim so you need to detach yourself completely from your own family no Yes, if someone is trying to shove down your throat something prohibited according to you, then you have to take, obviously, precaution and you have to protect yourself. But generally, especially where people are supportive and they, they don't have a problem, I, why should we have a problem? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. I do know that there were some uh, of my colleagues who actually sent me emails telling me they don't agree. You have the right not to agree and we have the right also to disagree. Uh, I think this is a very fair statement. It's very balanced. And to be honest, if you were to mix with the reverts and, and, and others, you would realize the, the uprightness of what I've just said. 
uh, may Allah make it easy for all of us. I'm not saying that we will participate in what is wrong, but I'm saying a reunion of the family, nothing wrong during the holiday season. So what if that holiday season happens to be falling during the Christmas and during the New Year and so on? Uh, a lot of us uh, seize bargains that happen to be uh, there for Christmas. You know, they say, oh, the Christmas sale. And you have Muslims going to buy, not because they are participating in the Christmas, for example, but because they, they are participating in the sale part of that uh, that deal. So uh, is it, do we just have to sit and wait until the price shoots up again before we actually buy our stuff? No, you can go and purchase it. You can actually go and you should go. You can save yourself a little bit of money that you might want to reach out to the poor with or you might have saved something with. So remember, we don't hate people. We don't hate things. Uh, we actually may disagree with respect on certain matters, just like they would disagree with us on certain matters. We'd love that they be respectful in their disagreement. This is something very balanced. I pray, my brothers and sisters, that we don't misunderstand what has been said. And I pray that we can spread this far and wide. Inshallah, I'm going to be posting this up on YouTube and we'll give it a good title by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any reverts out there, inshallah, you can uh, leave us comments to tell us how you've managed, uh, inshallah, with this. And those of you who don't have family who are reverts, I'm sure you sometimes you may not understand what we've just said, subhanallah. But uh, I know that a lot of you guys would actually go out on the holidays that happen to be during this time of the year. So don't you dare come and tell me that you haven't made use of the festive season. Oh, you have. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and make us all from among those who uh, do not compromise our prayers and our uh, modest dress. And at the same time, I, I'm talking of the dress code and the, the, the diet restrictions uh, and so many other uh, you know, uh, things that perhaps we have imposed on ourselves based on what we believe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us not to impose that on others who don't believe. They believe differently. Someone was asking me, you know, uh, I have a non-Muslim friend who is a lady, uh, you know, and she has to travel. Uh, must she travel with a mahram? You know, should, I imp should we impose on her to travel with a mahram? And I'm like, you know, you cannot impose on her to, to follow your faith. She doesn't follow your faith. Uh, the halal food, she doesn't have to eat halal. She doesn't have to... Um, she doesn't have to pray with you. She doesn't have to, uh, you know, dress according to you. Uh, it's it, it, she. She belongs to a different faith. Come on, respect that. Let her do what she believes uh, she has to do, and you do what you believe you have to do. So to impose on people things that they don't believe uh, is is equally wrong. If it were to be done to us, uh, and here we're talking of Subhanallah, you know, the majority of us. Uh, we have a lot of uh, acquaintances, friends, uh, partners, uh, even family members who happen to be non-Muslim. We actually reach out to them uh, during, not just during this particular time, but throughout uh, with the best of our character and conduct. Uh, today I had a beautiful incident that I really, really am proud of and I thank Allah for giving me the opportunity I was actually catching a flight and uh, I can tell you what happened. There was a couple, a Hindu couple. We were flying into, into India and there was a Hindu couple uh, on the chute getting into the plane. One, the sister must have been in her 30s, I think. They had a child and uh, she threw up. And I immediately, out of all the people, I immediately opened my bag. I took out a, a plastic. You know, I've got kids of my own, but I was on, traveling on my own. I took out a plastic and I, I quickly gave it to her. And I told her, you know, she knew what to do with it. So she started, uh, you know, throwing up into the bag. And I waited for a moment. I took out the Dettol wipes that I had in my bag as well. And, and, and I gave it to her husband. And I told them, you know, to make use of it. And I waited for a moment. And why I waited was I told them, after she had finished and all that, I said, look, you guys, get up. I'm a frequent flyer. I can tell you that if these people in the plane uh, see that you're sick, they will offload you from the flight because you become a liability. And I think the rules in, uh, are that uh, they have to offload you if you're not well. So if you don't say anything and you just get in, then at least you'd be able to fly because it's a very short flight. So uh, they were. I, I said, give me this bag. And they were quite surprised because the 
bag was filled with you know what. So I got the bag from the lady and they were just looking. They didn't know who I was. I did not know who they were, but I knew they were Hindu. They knew I was Muslim. And so what I did is I, I then let them go in front of me. And when they got in, then I put my boarding pass, you know, forward and I told them, okay, I, this is me and so on. And I tried to uh, make sure that they were gone in. And then I went in with this bag filled with, uh, you, you know what, and I took it to the bathroom in the section I was and I threw it in, washed my hands and I got back and I thanked Allah for giving me an opportunity to serve a brother and a sister and their child of mine in humanity uh, when they were in need. So this is how we reach out to people whom we may not share the same faith with. And this is what, what is meant by living in you know multicultural environments multi-religious environments whereby you serve one another for a, for a uh, in fact for the sake of your maker your common maker and uh, for the goodness uh, I, I'm very happy that Allah gave me the chance to do that. And I'm sure a lot of people who were on the shoot, and they, a lot of them looked like non-Muslim, perhaps predominantly Hindu, uh, I'm sure they would all have learned a lesson to say, whoever this guy was, and they, prob they wouldn't have known who I was, by the way. Whoever this guy was, he was a Muslim, he was dressed in pure white, and he's the only guy who actually helped a lady who was throwing up by giving her something, waiting for it to happen, helping her by taking that bag away, and helping her onto the plane. I'm not bragging about it, but I'm telling you part of what we do because people accuse us of being, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever, hate preachers, of being people who don't uh, promote multicultural coexistence and tolerance. They don't know what they're talking about. What we do in our lives, if they had to know, they have not even done 10% of it. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide every one of us. I challenge all of you to reach out to people of other faiths in a way that they can see the beauty of who you are, what you stand for, the humanity in you before everything else. And if you're a mu'min, then the iman in you before everything else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all a beautiful holiday, a lovely end of the year holiday before you get back to work or to school or to whatever you're getting back to next year. And I pray that it's a better year coming for us. Now, one might say, uh, subhanAllah, you know, you're not supposed to say this or do this. Listen, we all use that calendar. Every single one of us uses the calendar, uh, almost all of us. So in that particular case, <laughs> what have I done wrong? I'm just telling you, subhanAllah, that I pray that uh, the, the coming year is going to be better. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and open our doors. I'm sure those who are going from grade 1 to 2 or 2 to 3, those who are being promoted, those who are going uh, back to school, universities, whatever it is, it's going to be a new year. In most cases, uh, there are some countries that use September as the, the, the rollover, but that's fine. It's still the end of the year. And I really do ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant all of us good guidance to be able to understand how to live in societies and communities where the people are not Muslim and uh, or even some of them or all of them or, or most of them subhanallah uh, we have to learn to respect each other in a beautiful way uh, i cannot impose my values my morals on them and they should not impose theirs on mine that's what makes a beautiful beautiful world and inshallah that is the true meaning of multiculturalism and i wow i hope i can get back to you with more you can tell me stories by putting comments inshallah on the youtube uh, link down here by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, let's see how far we can get. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.